Hi, this is Craig, and welcome to another episode of Cruising Off Duty. This is an exciting episode because this starts the five-week vacation I have that will have me exploring Barcelona, Valencia, Las Palmas and the Canary Islands, and then doing a transatlantic sailing voyage with distant shores on a 50-foot catamaran. I know, pretty sweet. The best part is you're going to feel like you're coming along with me because I'm going to bring all my cameras, my computers, and everything I need to make episodes. So who am I traveling with? Well, sadly, it's not Janice. It's a guy named Dan. Well, this should have been a situation where me and some random guy got stuck bunking together for five weeks, but just dumb luck, we've met once before. But you'll learn more about Dan in a moment. I tell you, carrying five weeks of clothing, computers, cameras, and everything on your back is not easy. And I'll show you what I look like with all of it on. Hello, cruisers. So this is an exciting day. This is the day I leave on a plane to Barcelona. And this is everything I'm bringing for a month long trip, more than a month. Of course, my camera gear, everything I own electronics is in this bag and clothing and everything I need to live is in this bag. I don't think I've ever carried this much stuff at once, but uh, it all fits. It actually isn't as bad as it looks. The weight of this counterbalances the weight of this. So I could probably walk fairly far like this. So I'll be making episodes, so you'll see it soon. Catch you on the other side. So follow along as I take you on this five week odyssey, crossing Spain onto Las Palmas, then across the ocean to St. Lucia, starting right now. Okay, I'd like to introduce you to Dan, who's gonna be my compadre on this trip through Spain, first to Barcelona, then to Valencia, yes. for a total of about 12 days, yeah. and uh, show you a little bit of how this was just weird, crazy dumb luck that we ended up being crew members on this transatlantic crossing. Do you want to explain how, well, who you are and how we met? Uh, well, I'm Dan Kurgoff uh, from Chicago. Uh, we met, what, back in February? Yeah. Uh, in St. Thomas. Uh, dumb luck, just walking down the street and saw two people and I was sitting there thinking, man, look familiar, I couldn't place it. And then uh, about, Oh, what? Uh, probably about an hour later, my wife and I were sitting at a restaurant and they came walking up and it dawned on me and uh, cruising off duty. Yeah. So it, we sat around for yeah. two, three hours just sitting there talking. And it was an open air restaurant, so we were walking by on the main street and, and I heard cruising off duty and we looked over and Dan and his wife Nicole were there and I'd never met them, of course, and I, I said hi and they said, come on in, have a drink. And we sat for a couple hours, got to know each other. The funny part was that when I went and met, um, uh, Paul and Cheryl at the Annapolis Sailboat Show, they, they said, would you like to go across the Atlantic with us on a catamaran? And I said, hell yeah. And then they said, okay, well, we're just, we'll give you a call when we've got it all organized. And then they called me and said, you're going to be sharing a bunk in the catamaran with a guy named Dan. And surprisingly enough, when we mentioned your name to Dan, he said, that's... A I met, met him in St. Thomas. Yeah. So. so I was like, he told, she told me who he was and I said, yeah, we had a good time. I hung up for a couple of hours having drinks and stuff so a little, little less nerve-wracking when you're spending maybe two weeks on a boat in a little tiny room with somebody you actually met before, met before yeah so when we uh, once we realized the coincidence we called each other and contacted each other and said well we're gonna fly to Europe anyway he's from Chicago I'm from Ottawa but there's no direct flights to Las Palmas and uh, we said well we're gonna fly to Europe to get to Las Palmas we might as well make it worth our while so we decided to add a good seven days onto what we were originally thinking yeah and go to Barcelona so this footage was actually filmed in we're filmed in Valencia right now you're gonna see footage coming up where we're just getting to Barcelona the reason we're filming this way after the fact is we did this whole intro and introducing Dan when we were still at the airport yeah in Montreal yeah in Montreal when we flew out together and somewhere or other all that footage went MIA we think it's because I got an SD card that went corrupt so we lost all of our footage of us introducing him and being at the airport. So we're doing it now. Yeah. <laughs> now that we're in Valencia. After a long day of walking. Yes, we've had a long few. All the time in Barcelona you're going to see was filmed before this intro. So anyways, you now all know who Dan is because you're going to see him in a second huffing and puffing with all of his luggage. <laughs> see ya. Dan's dying. He's got three, three massive backpacks. We are here. No way you have a heart attack on the street. That would be bad. Close. So, and this is the building we are going to be in, 217. Uh, oh no, it's okay, we're waiting for someone. Yeah. Thank you. We contacted the lady for this Airbnb and she said we could come at noon and drop off our luggage and grab the keys. But then she said we had to come back at 3. So even though we had two hours sleep, we were forced to walk around the streets of Barcelona. 
So even though we're jet lagged and sleep deprived, we had three hours to kill according to the lady at the Airbnb, so we decided to walk around. I brought my big DSLR camera, my shotgun microphone, catching the sights and sounds of Barcelona. One thing you notice right away is how ornate all the buildings are. I mean, even apartment buildings seem to have these very grandiose balconies, very breathtaking. Now the lady running the Airbnb told us that today there was a demonstration in the downtown core. Now we knew very little about the struggle that's going on here in Spain, but we knew that there were separatists trying to secede from Spain. And we found out just before coming here that Barcelona is the hub of separatists. So we're kind of expecting to see some outrage and Molotov cocktails and who knows what, but it ended up being a protest to stay together. So all of these people we saw with flags walking around were actually people who want to leave Spain the way it is. So it was very calm, very peaceful, and at no time did we feel at risk. The one thing that was kind of funny is because I had a very obvious camera with a shotgun microphone, most people thought I was part of the media including this older couple, and I had to tell them I was YouTube. And they went, ah, oh, YouTube. Funny? 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 No, uh, YouTube. YouTube. Ah. Oh. Uh, this is what was a bullfighting arena. They no longer do that here anymore. It's now outlawed. But now this has turned into a museum. And there's a similar venue somewhere where they said they turned it into a shopping mall. So after walking around for what felt like hours, we thought, yeah, it was close enough to three o'clock and headed back to our Airbnb. Okay, after a really long day, we've checked into our Airbnb. They wouldn't let us check in until 3 p.m. Well, actually, it was kind of a funny story. They let us bring our luggage into the place and we saw it all. And she said, oh, I just need to clean it and I'll give you the keys now and you come back later. And she kind of said in Spanish, uh, usually check in 3 p.m. But we thought since, <laughs> since we'd already seen the place and we already had the keys that, hey, at like what, 2.45 or 2.40? Two, yeah, about that. We decided, well, let's just go back and if the doors are locked, because we left it unlocked, she was in there cleaning and she had her own key. If it's locked, she's already gone. So, so we were like, we're exhausted. We've been walking around for like two and a half hours killing time and uh, we come back and the door's locked. So we are dreaming with these old fashioned skeleton, skeleton keys that you never see anymore. And these locks are hard to get through. So we're jimmying with the door. And then she's through the door, hola! And we're like, oh, hi, it's just us. We didn't know if you are still here. No, no, you're not come in yet. You come back at three. <laughs> okay, what were you doing? <laughs> we're like, what are you running around naked in our apartment? We've already seen the place. But anyways, so okay, we're here now. Wait, make sure we saw the place and that her running around no, naked. No, yeah, we didn't see her running around naked. Maybe we're, maybe she likes to clean in, in the nude. You never know, that could be it, right? Well, yeah, but, She seemed uh, very shocked that we were back 15 minutes before three, but <laughs> anyway, so I'm gonna take you on a little tour of our palatial estate. So, start with, this is the front door, which actually goes to another front door because there's actually two apartments uh, in the same thing. And this is our kitchen. This is a massive place for just two guys. Well, of course, a full-size fridge. Full-size kitchen table, double sink, microwave oven, tons and tons of cabinet space. I mean, we could live here for a month. And then there's multiple ways to get out into this veranda, but I'll come back to that later because there's another way I want to show you the rest of the place inside. This <clears throat> over here is our living room. You kind of have this like nooky area. This is a whatever those pull-down beds are. So if, actually there's three beds in this place. You can see there's a mattress there. So that's a bed if you needed it. Really nice bookshelves, couch, chair, kind of a small flat screen and then some creepy, creepy picture that creeps both of us out. Anyways, we won't talk about that. But anyways, this is a second way to get out onto this veranda, which I'll get to again. Then you come down this hall, a beautiful stained block window to the outside, stained glass on this one as well. So this is Dan's ultra swanky room, very romantic. Too bad he's here alone. So he's got this bed. This is his washroom, which is very nice and modern. Double sinks. Holy crap, I didn't realize this bathroom was this big. <laughs> I didn't get to see this. Damn him for taking the better room. Okay, well this is his, now I'm very jealous. Anyways, you'll see my room now. So this is his and he also gets Sliding glass door. This is the third way to get out onto our, uh, we're on the top floor of this place. And uh, he's got a, room, a way to get out without even having to go through the main part. So then you come down this hall, and this is my, what I thought was a really nice room until I saw his bathroom. So this is my king size bed, just for me. Yay me. 
Then there's these massive, I mean, I didn't know what that was going to open up to, catacombs of six other rooms, but these massive doors are just uh, closets, which is very strange and, and uh, safe in case you have ultra valuables, which I do not have. And the, the same thing in there, another one. And this is my bathroom, which like I said, until just recently, I thought was quite nice. Very nice shower. A very kind of modern sink and then everything in Spain seems to have they always have a bidet it's not a Canadian thing I don't even know how to use a bidet nor do I want water splashed up my bum so I'm not going to be using that but anyways I think this is pretty nice now it's not Dan level nice I mean clearly I got the short end of the stick there but uh, yeah I got the next Airbnb so I get first pick up that one when we go to Valencia so let me take you to the best part of it which is this veranda we've been alluding to so like I said we're up on the roof and I wish we'd come out here earlier when it was beautiful and sunny as you saw that footage we walked around for like three hours looking at all the pro stay together people wanting Spain not to break apart the Catalonians are one side and the Spain what do you want to call them Spain let's stay together team is on the other side so this is what that's what it looks over like over our fence and this is our outdoor couch. Really nice expandable table. I don't know why you'd want to stare at nothing, but there's like a, like a park bench here that faces a bamboo wall, which I don't know why you'd want to look at that. Then we thought this was just like an outdoor shed or what this was, but she's told us this is our laundry room. So yay, we get to do laundry. We don't have to be stinky, stinky boys. So a washing machine and a dryer. Pretty sweet. Uh, oh, more cushions, yay. Don't know what those are for, but they're there if you need them. So that's it. So, rule of thumb with Airbnb though, when you go on their website and you pick a city, they'll quote you prices. Make sure you put the dates you want before you get your hopes up. Because we saw nothing but 70 and $80, I think that was even Canadian, uh, Airbnbs that looked really nice. Maybe not with this nice rooftop terrace, but really nice and then when we put our dates in all those nice cheap places just disappeared and everything went from 70 to 80 dollars to 150 to 200 dollars so we were like oh. so for 150 dollars we weren't going to get uh something so swanky as this so for a few extra bucks we paid 180 canadian uh for this so that would be like 140 us which look at how much space we have all that stuff inside plus all this out here plus laundry facilities it's a sweet deal. Now the thing with Airbnb, you don't want to stay just for one night. That's why Janice and I have never used Airbnb because we tend to use hotels as a stopover between like, we do a lot of cruises and other things. So we tend to the fly to Miami and then maybe we need one night in a hotel and then we go on a cruise and when at the end of the cruise, we might have one night in a hotel. Those are some loud seagulls. But uh, so we only need to stay places one night. The problem with Airbnb is they all charge you a cleaning fee at the end. So if you're gonna stay four, five, six, seven days, paying $60 to have it cleaned at the end is not a huge deal. Guys, keep it down over there. So, um, I don't know if you can hear that, but that's crazy, I've never heard such loud seagulls. Um, so if you're staying one night, not worth the cleaning fee. If you're staying four or more nights, I think we're staying five nights here, then 60 bucks broken up over five days is really not that bad. So there you go. Janice and I will definitely consider flying from Montreal to Barcelona. There's a direct flight every Saturday, super cheap, $404 US or $504 or $5 Canadian. Super cheap, very easy, right Dan, the flight? Yeah, oh, very And then when you get here, there's plenty of Airbnbs, but book early and make sure you pick your dates before you get your hopes up. And that's it for now. Say bye, Dan. See you later. Okay, we have this big kitchen and no food, so we gotta go out and find this market. Oh, what's the address? We gotta figure that out. She gave us a list of great places to eat and shop, and I'll get that now. And then we're going to go get some food. So we don't have to eat in a restaurant every single day, three times a day. Oh, it's getting dark. So 2.29 to 2.38. Okay, Sunday here in Spain is a little more sacred than it is where he's from in Chicago or I'm from in Ottawa. Because a lot of stuff's closed, and we found the market that we're supposed to go buy stuff in, and it's a big metal door down, it's not open. So we gotta go find some little corner store convenience to get a little bit of food so we don't starve to death tomorrow morning for breakfast, so wish us luck. Okay, good news, we're not gonna starve to death. Bad news, we had to buy just the staples of life. 
loaf of bread, rum, coke. What else did we buy? Monster. Two Monster Energy drinks. Uh, Nutella. Nutella, and there's jam left from the previous people, all the little individual packets, and some cream cheese. I yeah. think it's cream cheese, it's in Spanish, we're not sure if it's cream cheese. So. The little Krupp's uh, espresso packets. Yeah, of course, she said there's espresso packets for our coffee maker. So we can make it through the, till tomorrow morning on toast with Nutella and jam. So that's it, and we get to party tonight with rum and Cokes and Monster Energy drinks, so we're doing okay. And tomorrow we're gonna hit that big market when it's open and get real food. So that's it for now until we start drinking. Ciao. Okay, so we got our Monster Energy drinks, our rum, and we're just trying to figure out what we're gonna do tomorrow. Today was a long day of walking. No, a long day of being on the airplane yeah. and everything else. So. We've had two hours sleep, so that's why we are drinking, well, I'm drinking my rum with Monster. He's just having Monster and a rum and coke at the same time. But uh, trying to keep us awake here because we don't want to, it's actually only 621 at night here but it feels like it's midnight and that's what two o'clock your time man yeah in ottawa that's five hours it's only 1:21 in the afternoon back in ottawa so it's still really early but it feels like it's two in the morning because we've had i think i've had two hours sleep in the last 36 hours and you've said like two hours in the past like 48 so. yeah neither one of us has slept much with all this traveling and prep so but we're not complaining we're in paradise right now and we're having rum and rum and cokes and uh we're just gonna plan what we're doing tomorrow. So more walking. As some plane flies directly over top of us. We're gonna go to the Gaudi, we're not sure if it's called a museum. Uh, I think it's the Gaudi Cathedral and then there's a whole city block that's all yeah. is our uh, uh, architecture. So what you, if you're curious, go Google Gaudi architecture and in Barcelona he's huge and he makes these really like Salvador, Salvador Dali-esque type of buildings that are really- well, That's where the name Gaudi came from. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, I did not know that. Okay, learn something new every day. But it's really like crazy unique buildings that he's done and it, Barcelona's kind of known for that. So we're gonna go check out this massive cathedral. It's still been renovated. It's been, they've been renovating yeah. it for like decades. But, uh, so it's got a lot of scaffolding around it, but I guess inside it's just like, you know, craziness. So I'm gonna go see that tomorrow and then we'll try and bang off a few more things. What's the other thing you wanted to do? Well, there was the park that Some I think he park. had something to do with and yeah. I think it's pretty close, but if it's too far away, we'll skip that and just find something close to do. Yeah, we're gonna just bang off two or three things. Another thing we want to do in the future is the, uh, the, the Montserrat, Ma Montserrat. Uh, the monastery or whatever. Yeah, so it's up on a hill, right? So yeah, up in the mountain gym. Yeah, so we're gonna do that. It's just what's close to each other so we can bang them off as efficiently as possible. So tomorrow for sure we're doing the the Gaudi uh, Cathedral, because it literally, you can see it from here. I mean, we are central. We are, everything is like in like five blocks in every direction from here. So this is an awesome location. Good choice, good choice. Oh, <laughs> so that's it for tonight. I think we're just gonna drink and go to bed relatively early. So ciao for now, see you tomorrow. Okay, that's it for this episode, but there's just so much that's gonna happen in the near future. We spend five days in Barcelona, and I'm telling you, the Sagrada Familia will blow your mind. Then we take an electric train across to Valencia, and spend six days there. Then we fly to Las Palmas in the Canary Islands and spend four days there before we sail across the Atlantic on a catamaran and go to St. Lucia for a number of days, which of course we haven't gotten to yet, but I'm sure it's all going to be breathtaking. So subscribe so you don't miss any episodes.